Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest 2015. Boy, I tell you, we've come a long way, folks. We've come a long way. And thanks very much for being with us up to this particular point. And I think we're going to have quite a year. In fact, for the next two years, as you know, there's going to be a presidential election come 2016. And it's going to be quite an affair. And so we got work to do over the next two years. We've got issues to discuss. We've got people to meet. We've got ideas to talk about. And it's all in reference to making, making us a better America, for that matter. It's, it's, it's not an easy task, if you will. And, uh, and I plan to bring some very interesting people on at this point in time. And uh, my guest for the, first off, Happy New Year's to everybody. Happy New Year's and Happy Holidays to everybody. I think it was a great deal. And uh, my guest, I'll say it to him right off the bat. You've seen him before. And for those of you who haven't, his name is Cal Henry. He is the president of the Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs. You're going to get to know more about what that organization is all about. That's what we're going to do the first half hour of the show. And then the second half hour of the show, we're going to take advantage of this, of this guest and kind of sort of talk about what happened during 214 and others as a result of his background and, and, and involvement uh, in the state of Oregon issues from that standpoint. And, um, and then we're going to get into 2015 and kind of get us some, some sort of prediction. Maybe we might get some predictions today with our guests in regards to who's going to be the president. And then we'll bring him back on uh, after after the election results and see whether or not he, he's doing it. I'm banking on the fact that I'm going to vote for him, basically, because <laughs> he, he's the guy that's going to make sure that, that it's going to be done right. But anyway, uh, we're going to go on and get right into the show. And like I said before, we're going to have a guest today is Mr. Cal Henry. He's a Ph.D. and uh, some of us know, have known him for a number of years, like I have. You'll get to know him like uh, just just like I've I've known I know him up this point in time, and uh, he's done a number of things here in the state of Oregon, and and it's going to be very interesting. And that, at the other the other side of the coin, I want to make sure is that I want to make mention again. I've been as you know I've been still donning my my cap here, the uh, Vietnam vet, and, and telling those vets out there, especially you folks who are loved ones and whatever, to get those vets down to the G, to the VA if if they need the benefits and this, that, and the other, they all kinds of benefits that are sitting there. And for those vets that are uh, supposedly supposedly on the corner identifying themselves as vets, who well, a number of them aren't, ask them for the, that ID card. You ask them for that ID card. If they show you the ID card, you know, we ask, buy them a cup of coffee. I say, buy them a cup of coffee. Don't buy them a fifth of liquor. <laughs> Don't give them the money that's right off the bat. And for those folks who are there who are basically maybe hurting for whatever, then pick up in the car and take them to the appropriate organization. In fact, take them down to City Hall and, 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 and if not that, call the police and have them pick them up and take them to a place where they can get food and whatever they have to do, okay? Well, okay, with that, that that's about it. Cal, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. good. How's Happy the family? New Year, Happy New Year to you. Thank you. And thank your you. family. And, thank and you to much. the audience as well. Appreciate that very uh, much. Mary. And uh, I'm doing okay. My yeah. family's doing okay. Good, good. How's the wife doing? She's doing fine. She, she's going to allow you to work with me uh, for the next uh, well, year or so? We, she recognized that change necessary and need to happen, and we must take advantage of it wherever we can. And why are you and smiling you, and looking at me about that? <laughs> because <laughs> you, you have a, an opportunity to... To, to help the people of Oregon, as well as both black and white, as well as others, to understand many of the issues that we are confronting. I have often said that if you don't want to know history of the United States, you got to know black American history. Exactly, exactly. And uh, when they know the black American history, it gives, it leads into a lot of things that can happen in terms of bringing about the changes that right, we necessarily right. have. And as you know, <laughs> right before, we, we, got, we got to mention something about the ducks. As you know, they're going to oh, be playing uh, here. Are we going to say anything about the Ducks? Well, who, who are your favorite? Uh, who's going to win this 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 championship, this well, first championship? Well, I told my son, who is a Duck, okay, uh, that whoever came out of the uh, Florida and uh, Oregon game will win the national championship. They're going to win. I I, was, I predict the Ducks will win. You heard it right here from the, on the show, folks, from Cal Henry. He says he said that the Ducks are going to win this race, and that's the first time, by the way. It's going to be a first national one. They're going to pick the. The, the number one team, if you will, in the state, now, well, in well, the country for that matter. Well, this that's is true. It's, inter inter it's an interesting, interesting change of uh, And I think that's the way, way to do it, too. I think that's the way to do it, and, too. And, and see, uh, I think what, when people look at these team play, 
they can see what I'm talking about. If you're going to understand this, uh, uh, the United States history, right. you've got to understand black American history. Mm-hmm. And you, when you look at those football teams, uh, uh, teams, look at the black American history unfold. And you know I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to challenge you on that because I know you're also an educator and you have a background and you spent a lot of time <laughs> in the Portland metropolitan area and <laughs> i.e. trying to get the Portland public schools to come on board so they can start educating, the, putting it within the system. Yeah. But hopefully maybe this time around they might might understand and listen. Well, well I think they will but, but we have to be on the front line. That's okay. one of the reasons that the Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs came into full in 1977. 77? Yes. Wow. When when we found that uh, our voice was it was very minimal, and no one was really speaking up for uh, the black Americans or the black Oregonians in terms of what was happening, mm-hmm. and people felt, felt they didn't need to speak up, and many people were afraid to speak up. So the Oregon mm-hmm. Assembly for Black Affairs was uh, came out of, of that area uh, of understanding that we needed a political voice. And what what. What role were you doing? What were you doing just before, i.e., creating this organization? Well, the, the, the whole point, I was working for doing? the state. For working the for the state? Yeah, working for the Secretary of State. So. And who was the Secretary of State at that point? Well, in time? Clay Myers. Was Clay Myers. Yeah. Boy, that, that, boy, that brings back memories. Uh, yeah. Wow, wow. And, 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 and to, yeah. uh, you know. And you, you know, were employed by then when? What, what year was that? When uh, that first? Uh, well, uh, 1977. 77, up to and to retirement, right? Uh, yeah, I've been there for that long. How many years? About I mean, 20 years. About 20 years. Mm-hmm. And you worked for every Secretary of State during that particular Well, period. I worked for about four of them. About four of them. You had Clay Myers, I know Norma Paulus. Paulus. And who is? Uh, Barbara Roberts. Barbara and, Roberts. And Phil Keesling. And Phil Keesling. Yeah. Oh, very, yeah, Phil, uh, real dear friend. Real yeah. dear friend. Real yeah. friend. So let's talk yeah. about the, 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 the Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs. Okay. Okay. The, the Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs is a statewide organization that is committed to improving the status of blacks in Oregon. Okay. We're trying to improve them politically, socially, uh, educationally, economically, and, le- and, and, and with legal understanding. Okay, okay. Yeah, uh, these are issues that are, uh, uh, that are very acute in, uh, in what blacks necessarily need to deal with uh, situations in Oregon. For a long period of time, people have been denying there were a problem, you know, until we began to expose a little bit of and share with the uh, with the community and share with and, and, and with the state at large, people began to see things just a little bit different. And as you're saying, you're reaching out now as, as far as this organization. And so how did you go about doing that from the standpoint with that first year? I mean, what were some of the things and events that you put together to sort of get to reach well, out? Uh, well, well, and where were you reaching out? Well, at? We, we reached out to everybody. It's okay. a, the, the the organization is a nonpartisan. And you started out that way. It started out the way. way, and we're still that way. Yeah, right, right. And right. what we did, we talked to all the political organizations in the state. Republicans, Democrats, the, Independent, and, the whole, you know, the whole. And we invited them to our convention and whatnot. And you and started we, out with a convention just yeah, well, first time around? Yes. Uh, uh, I, I think, yes. We had uh, a, a convention. I think it was the first one that we had, or the mm-hmm. second one, mm-hmm. when uh, when uh, Governor Teal was running. Oh, okay. We, okay. You know, no, and Bob Straub was the governor at, at the time. We we started out with uh, that aspect of it, and we uh, we invited all the individuals to come and play when the, uh, Governor Teal was running against uh, uh, the Republican. Uh, who didn't want the people to come into the state? You know who I'm talking about. Uh, was, that? was that McCall? Oh, Tom. Uh, no, no, yeah. Tom didn't. Did, did. oh, come on. Okay. Well, no, no. Here. But what I'm saying about okay. that. But, but you, you invited everybody. We invited everybody. Okay, we invited so. him. Okay. And we also invited Bob Straub and others there, at, at, at the time. I have since you're talking about that particular yeah, right, point. Right, right, right. We invited them all to come to our convention. We had it at the Benson Hotel here in oh, really? Portland. And uh, the only one of them who was running came was uh, Vicar Teer, who was running. Now, Bob came. Did Bob came, the Democrat? Did he no, come? No, he didn't show up. He didn't show up. No. So, but, you, but you did say Tom McCall, did, did yeah, he didn't he, come? He didn't show up? He didn't show up either. Yeah. Now, he was, a, he was basically, that, that was during the, uh, uh, the, the primary, right? Because That's during the primary. During the primary, right. We, well, the, the, the convention only endorsed during the primary. In the, in the primary? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. And we, right. we tried to get him to. And Vic was the only one that basically came. 
Yes. Were, were there others that were running for governor at that time? Well, whoever was running, we invited them all. No, uh, and, and, and Dick showed up. And, and Dick showed up. And, Interesting. and the press showed up. Mm -hmm. And they okay. showed his face all over. Okay. Okay. And, uh, and uh, he won the primary on the Republican side. Okay. Mm -hmm. The governor uh, was, uh, was the candidate on the Democrat side. Mm -hmm. And the big issue was that uh, uh, some of the uh, surrogates for Governor Straub said, uh, you got him nominated. I didn't, we didn't get him nominated. Because what, he, what they was telling that uh, uh, Governor Atia, when he got an uh, endorsement of the convention, right. okay. uh, people all over the Oregon recognized that here's a guy who don't mind working with black people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm, interesting. And, now, uh, well, that was a was that the first time that he ran? He ran, or was that the second time that he ran? Well, was well, the second time when he was governor? Okay, he ran again. He ran for a second no, term. No, no, no. This is the first, first time. time. Okay, first ran, time. Yeah, it's the first so time. He's running against Trump. Trump, Trump, Trump was Trump incumbent. Was yeah. Okay. And, and and he didn't mind telling everybody that uh, if he had not received that endorsement from the convention, mm -hmm. he may not have been governor. Mm -hmm. He didn't mind sharing that. He shared that with a lot of Republicans later. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, but but thinking about that whole area, you have to think about how people were perceiving a new a new organization coming into being, right. d doing right. some things, and we didn't hide what we did. All our endorsements, all the things that we did, were out in opening. Mm -hmm. The convention was out such that people could see mm -hmm. that we didn't hide anything. That's like we don't hide anything today. The organization for Black Affairs has been willing to go out and, and work with any group or any organization or in, uh, any of the elected officials. And one of the things we try to get black Oregonians to do is to get involved in the political process mm -hmm. at all levels of government and all levels of the community. You know, when you begin to look at, uh, around us, we didn't see very many people willing to go out and do something unless they were told by whites to do it. See, and my effort was that Let's share with the community, with the state, what we can do and what we want to do and how we want to, to be represented. Mm -hmm. See, m most of the stuff that we have put together over the period of time is to share with people that we needed to be involved mm -hmm. in, a, in a lot of things. And if you go back and look at all these years that I've been in Oregon, you see that's the point that we're trying to do. But uh, give you an example that led up to this, too is that when I came back to Oregon and uh, started uh, doing my graduate work at Oregon State, I, one of the things that I was pushing is to see why we were not involved in the educational process mm -hmm. the way we were in. Or the other thing, I was, I was, a, I was a, a, a captain in the Air Force, and I got out of the Air Force and became a captain in the Air National Guard. My whole point there is why we were not involved in the Air National Guard. Mm -hmm. So when you began to look at... You didn't mention the Marine Corps, but I mean, No, I didn't know, yeah, but I was in the... I just, just want to make sure you, well, I'm, I was you in acknowledge that. that. Well, I, well, the whole point of it, we <laughs> needed to be involved in the military, okay, too. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Okay, okay. And, uh, and, and we were not. Good, okay. And I, I never forget the time that I went to a, a summer camp over at Count, uh, Camp Riley. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of young uh, uh, students, uh, great students, came over there in a, in a summer camp. And uh, I, I wasn't involved with the summer camp, but I was watching what was happening with, between the, uh, the airmen and the... And the students. And, and the uh, black students, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, and that led to the issue that I raised, that we needed to see some black adults involved mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. that process. Makes sense because people need to understand what was going on with this whole process. So when you began to put all this together, uh, or, or one of the things I came up with in during that period of 1970, that about, I said, we need more political active maturity among black Oregonians mm -hmm. if we're gonna make a difference. And that led to uh, the, the upshoot of creating the Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs. Did you have a small group? Was, 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 you, well, was, well, there, was there blacks well, working with you in the organizational well, structure of the organization during that time? Uh, uh, well, it, it was. It, we had a committee, but it, it was a it was a small effort in okay. many ways. Okay. Uh, one of the things I was developing, what I call the the Cal Mac Corporation, 
was going to deal with Cal, was it? Cal Mack. Company. Cal Mack. I mean, what, 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 Mack. Well, how do you get that? How do you get into that? What, what, well, what's the uh, Cal Mack? Company? Well, it's the name that I gave the corporation that I was dealing with. I had, uh, put together to try to bring about uh, a greater uh, affirmative action issues in okay. the state of Oregon. Okay. Hmm. And, and so I was out doing some work trying to get companies and, and, and school district and others involved in this aspect. That was your organization? That's my organization. Okay. The okay. one I put together as a business person okay. trying, okay. To, okay. trying okay. to do that. Okay. And uh, we held a conference at Willamette University. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, at that conference, uh, during the discussion place, people recognized we need a greater voice. With it. And so out of that uh, conference, uh, we called uh, the call to action conference that we had, mm -hmm. and uh, the people wanted to see more involvement of blacks in the state of Oregon. And as a, as a consequence of that aspect of it, there were about 30 or 40 people there that come mm -hmm. to that conference. And uh, we set up the next time we met, we met uh, and talk, talking about an organization structure that mm -hmm. was needed. Mm -hmm. We needed a political organization structure to make a difference. And that was part and parcel of the conference. You talked uh, about that yeah. part of it also. And, and it came out later uh, uh, that people wanted to set up a political organization. Mm -hmm. And I didn't mind that. It just told me that yeah, they, they recognized, the individuals recognized Well, you had it. to have that base. You, had to, yeah. you almost had to have Yeah, it. And, and so when we went in to create the organization, uh, we had set up four committees to look at some things, and then we came out to, and it was interesting how we got the name. Really? How did you, how'd you, come, how'd you, how'd you, how'd you do that? Well, the name was that uh, when we got to the point, I said, what was, should we name the organization? Mm -hmm. Some people wanted to name it uh, the Black Political Convention, the uh, uh, Black Organization, and they only wanted black people to participate in it. Mm -hmm. and, and some wanted to, uh, 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 the name to reflect that it's only for blacks. Mm -hmm. mm. And uh, uh, I just sit and listen to the discussion. I tell this all the time mm -hmm. because people need to know why. Yeah, where, sure. where you're sure. and, and then I raised the question one to this group of people. How many of you would participate if it was an organization you created that only blacks could and there were whites in the audience. There was a diverse group. Uh, well, no, these, Willamette, no, Willamette. no, no oh, these were black people. These were just black folks. Okay, just black people. Just black folks meeting, and and and, uh, and, and more than whole, no names went up, no hands went up, no hands went up. No. Interesting. And uh, then what they told me is that they want to create an organization that they didn't want to participate in. See, if you can name an organization, you only want black people to participate in it. They didn't want to. So instead of the uh, black uh, political party, it came out to be Oregon political um, Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs. Mm -hmm. For Black Affairs. Ah, okay. For so, Black Affairs. Yeah. Okay. See, I knew that. The I knew assembly the, was the diverse aspect of it. Uh, it, it was the body aspect. Okay. Okay, because many of the individuals uh, uh, were married or, in, or involved with their significant others who didn't look like it. Mm -hmm. See, I knew all of that. Mm -hmm. See, well, I knew the group who was, who was on, and they were not going to participate if if it was it, just a if, black. Yeah, because they, they would be, it would be questioning their own uh, understanding of who they are, and so. Uh, sometimes that can, that can be difficult. Sometimes, right? Well, it it can be because people don't realize. You know, well, it goes back to another point. Or you, yes. you raise another point. I find when you find interracial uh, marriages or interracial involvement, the people are co women are more committed than men are in most instances. Really? I, I seem to think so. When I organized the NAACP in Corrales, out of the woodwork, a lot of people came forward. But before that, you know, the, the males did not, regardless of whether male, black, or white. Hmm. They, they tend to take a, a lower stand. Now, somebody questioned me on that. That's okay. <laughs> it just raised the envelope of what I'm saying mm -hmm, about mm -hmm. uh, involvement. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You see, if we're not involved and willing to work and share our black humanity mm -hmm. with people, then we don't get anywhere yeah. in terms of the yeah. thing. And this is what you're seeing happening in this country today. Mm -hmm. And the, the Oregon Assembly of Black Affairs has been on the full uh, front 
of trying to get people involved regardless of who they are. Our membership is open to anybody who want to be a member. But let's go, let's talk, I want to talk a little bit more about um, uh, some of the activities you had at the convention. That's kind of like the, the major highlight, if you will, of the organization. Can you cite maybe, uh, let's say, through the years and bring it up to date in terms of which, uh, at, at those conventions that might have had a little bit more significance, if you will, uh, in terms of uh, discussions and things, things along that line, and who, who participated and that kind of thing. Can you highlight some of those conventions that you think was, 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 was relevant uh, during that particular time and, and ended up with, with some results that you guys were, that you were trying to look well, for? Well, well I like, think all the conventions that we had have right, okay. been in, in results. You know, uh, 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 when we had our economic summit. Um, when was that? When, when, was uh, that a convention? That was, it, it, was, it, was a, it was a statewide effort that we had. Okay. Uh, we had one. It was held here in Portland. In Portland, okay. And we had the governor there. And we did a lot with economic development department. The governor made sure the economic department was involved in all this stuff. And uh, out of that, a number of blacks uh, got some uh, some results of that. They got out, out in that aspect of it, and we had results like what jobs and I things think, of uh, nature. Well, I think jobs. And I also organizational. Think, I organizations think they got they, well. One of the things we sent out about uh, two thousand letters to all the businesses throughout the state of Oregon, mm -hmm. and and many blacks came and participated in it because the boss just told them to come and participate. But see. But it raised the level of, of, of awareness mm -hmm. so that people n understood that somebody else was looking at what mm -hmm. they were really doing. Mm -hmm. See, uh, I think that uh, uh, the environment we had in these conventions led to people wanting to let the blacks they knew mm -hmm. understand there's nothing wrong with them participating in some of these things. Well, you bring a good point up now. You know, as you said, you said the bosses told them, and then they came, if you will. Yes. The blacks came. And I guess now, after the convention, and they benefited as a result of that, uh, how many of those blacks uh, actually call, uh, basically called back and joined the organization? Well, did, you know, did, did you get, well a, a few of them you would think of that should have. Okay. And see, even today, uh, blacks are should. still afraid to get involved. Now, mm -hmm. I know that they get mad at me when I say that, but that's true. Yeah, okay. I mean, the truth of the pudding is that they are not involved. They're not involved. Uh, yeah. Right. And, and but they're beneficiaries. They're beneficiaries, they beneficiaries but, but they, they should be involved. Why don't they see that? The bosses see it because they say, I mean, the bosses say, go down there and, you know, we're trying to, we're trying to outreach, you know, engage or whatever because we hired you. <laughs> so. <laughs> and, and, and What's the deal? What do you think? <laughs> Well, well, the biggest thing is is fear. Fear. Yeah. Fear of. Fear of uh, losing something. Losing a job. A job or, or, or an opportunity. Okay. Yeah. Well, well one of the things the president of uh, uh, of Oregon State told me once, he said, "Cal, if you play the ball game, right? You, you could move faster." Mm -hmm. But I had to tell him. I had to look in the mirror every day, and had to look at myself. Mm -hmm. See, I come from a background where that service was one of the things to raise the level of empowerment of our people. I grew up in Texarkana, Texas, a dualistic school system that I went through. I saw blacks in Bowie County having a majority population, but controlled nothing. Mm -hmm. One of the things I committed myself all the, all the years was that I would try to do whatever I can to raise the level of empowerment. Mm -hmm. And that occurred. Mm -hmm. And see, and uh, out of that, it uh, led to a lot of things in my environment. So my commitment level was started early. But uh, you asked, go back to your other question, right. one of the things that I think had a tremendous impact on the state of Oregon was giving the statutory force to affirmative action in the state of Oregon. When was that? Uh, yeah. I was... No, that was early in, in about 75, I think. 75, was they're, they're doing it, yeah, the yeah. T administration? Uh, was that a T administration? Uh, or uh, it? it was, I think I it was Straub. Straub, 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 Straub administration. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but who, the two people who helped do that a great deal was uh, Representative uh, White, Bill White, mm -hmm. who is now with the Port of Portland, mm -hmm. and Bill Grinnell out of uh, uh, North Bend. Mm -hmm. Wendell's white son, Bill. The son, right? Not, the son, I'm, right, right. Wendell's son. son, yeah, he the was, son. Yeah, he and was, yeah. and uh, the 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 point was that when 
I, I developed I wrote the bill. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, that's a layman wrote uh, writing the bill, mm -hmm. and got got it introduced, and uh, and I used the uh, uh, the Oregon uh, state the state workers a, a, a association to work with me on that too as well. Okay. And and the NAACP to okay. work with me on that, but when. The, uh, Bill White and Bill Grinnell in this saw all this. They said, "Well, Cal, we're going to pass this." Hmm. Now, now, in some ways, the, the governor didn't want that bill passed, but uh, they said, "We will pass it. It will get it passed," and they did. Hmm. It was it was much stronger than people wanted it to be because we wanted to make sure the governor was the affirmative action office for the mm -hmm. state. Mm -hmm. He could set up a director of affirmative action mm -hmm. in the state of in mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. And that people had uh, uh, subpoena power to make mm -hmm. a big difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And because our point was that it's not doesn't do any good to set up this if you're not going to willing right. have right. a hammer right. to make right. some things right. Right. happen right. on this. Now you know I'm gonna I'm gonna that's gonna be another program we're gonna talk about because I'd like to get your assessment in terms of what what was the end result. I mean bringing it up to date and, and did well, did well, you get everything? Well, you know, well, any well, ideas? Well, the, we won't talk about that this time. I want uh, I think that's a that's a big the whole well, issue. Well, of, Affirmative action involvement and things well, like well, that. Well, well, no, well, let me just share with you the impact of that that that, that legislation right. led to us, in my view, having some women governors and more women in the legislature okay. and, and people getting elected other places. Okay. Okay. Now, I, I, I'm not going to say it would not have, all this would have occurred if it were yeah, not yeah, for yeah. that, mm -hmm. but it made it a lot easier for some of that to happen. Yeah. I remember when I was talking uh, because one of the things the uh, Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs went to both all the conventions, mm -hmm. the Republican convention as well as the Democratic convention. And I remember when the, the Speaker of the House, uh, uh, Bev Cumberland, uh made a, a statement that uh, we didn't need affirmative action anymore. I was over at, uh, over at the coast. At the, Who at made the that statement? The, uh, the majority leader of the, the, the Speaker of the House. The Speaker of the House. Who was that? Uh, Bev Corno. Corno, Be oh, Bev, 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 Bev Corno from uh, Eastern Oregon. She's Oregon. a good Republican. Well, I, I just she made the statement, and I, and I was in her little discussion group, and and I had to say to her, if if we didn't have affirmative action, you wouldn't be Speaker of the House today. Mm. Now that that was that piece of legislation had the most tremendous impact on the state of Oregon. And you're talking about Oregonians across the board. Uh, across, across the, the board. board, it wasn't just blacks. Yeah, but here yeah. again. Uh, General blacks who put forth things don't get benefit from it. Mm -hmm. uh, I have to tell people, when you go out and push something, you have to recognize you're doing it for your people as well as all the people at large. Do you feel that the blacks that were elected after that uh, through the years uh, uh, acknowledge the fact that, that that happened as a result of this? I don't know whether they acknowledge it. They may be aware of it. They may not be aware of it. Yeah. Before but we leave, we got a couple more minutes. I think we're going to get in there because we're going to talk about some other issues and some, uh, in the future. About some, I want to get more specific and want you to expand it. The other point that I want to make in this particular segment is that I noticed that you've always um, uh, made, made it a point, at least 80% or so of the time, to have your convention here within this particular area in the, in the Portland metropolitan area. Why was that so? Well, you got a news media here. You got okay. pop people living here. Uh, most of the blacks li in the state of Oregon live here, and they don't want to go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. They see a lot of opportunities are, are elsewhere, but generally blacks don't want to leave a safe area. And that's the acknowledgement in most cases of Oregonians in the media that the majority of them are here, right? Yeah. And, and, we, and we've had the conventions in Salem, right, and we have right. somewhere, I've seen that. and uh, and and we had call action leadership conferences in Salem and whatnot. But the, but the key point of it is that uh, if you want blacks to get involved, you, you can't give them an excuse not to get involved. That's good, and they have been getting involved. And, and, and more and more are becoming good, more involved. Good, good. Well, before we, I tell you what, we're going to take a short break. But before we do this, why don't you let them know just how to contact you and how to how to become a member, if you will, of the. Well, the organization. Well, how they, the, how they contact? Well, they can contact me by. Uh, uh, Maybe put this on the screen now. Put that website on the screen. Uh, yeah, they can go to the website and they can uh, 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 yes, register sir. online. Okay. They can become a member online. Okay. And uh, if they don't want to become a member online, they can 
uh, print out the uh, membership card, uh, membership application, and set, submit it in. And that's at www.oaba.us. That's correct. Right, okay. And make it to your attention, that'd be okay? That'd be fine. Okay. okay. But uh, we welcome everybody to participate because everybody benefit from my effort. Okay. And okay. we're not just doing it just for black folks, we're doing it for everybody. Sounds good. All okay. right. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to we're going to have we're going to be talking to to to, uh, uh, to Cal uh, a, a bit more about the the Oregon Assembly of Black Affairs, but more so than that, we're going to be talking about the issues that are relevant that maybe to the upcoming convention that's coming up. We're right. going to try to see get 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 an idea of what's happening, and, and a lot of times we're going to be opening up the line, Cal. Sure. That's over to you if that's okay with you to kind of give them the opportunity to maybe participate from the standpoint of what they feel the issues are, and 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 respond back to what you think might be the the issues and the, of the platform right at sure the next convention okay so with that we're going to take a short break folks and we'll be right back and we're just going to get into kind of get a feel um, for this engagement he talks about oregon and get, get some update and well, that's happened what happened to oregon and what happens in the, in the united states and uh, what's going to happen in this next presidential election hope we'll get those kind of comments from it okay we'll take a short break we'll be right back with you You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Sardo, the Oregon Voters Digest, and uh, we've got quite a guest here today. We've been talking with uh, the president of the Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs, Dr. Cal Henry, uh, who is also a former military person in the Air Force. And again, I make, make my point about uh, uh, the fact that vets should uh, get out there and take advantage of their benefits and the like, and a uh, very well-renowned person. In the first half, we talked about the Oregon Assembly of Black Affairs in terms of what it is. If you missed it, uh, you can go, you can pick it up on the, when it plays back, or you can pick it up on uh, on on, you, on on YouTube. Okay, Oregon Voters Digest. Okay, with that, and also uh, on the uh, on the website of the Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs, yeah. you want to acknowledge that. Okay, fine. All right. Now what we're going to do? We're just going to get into uh, with Mr. Henry and talk to him about 2014. Uh, from 16, a, a six, no, oh, no, for 14. 14. No, yes, we want to talk about the, you, you had your convention and you, you know you 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 made uh, certain uh, uh, endorsements or whatever. And uh, what 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 do you think? Uh, where, where are we now here here we're right in the midst of 2015? And did you get any results from the, some of the issues that you that you brought up at the convention oh, in 2014? The 2014 convention, we had some interns that were working with us. Okay. Okay. And uh, those interns, you know, two of them, one from Oregon State and one from the University of Oregon. And what we found that, that the Oregon State, uh, uh, the departments at Oregon State want to work with us more to get more people involved in, okay. in 2016. Okay. Oh, good. Really? So, so uh, that was a plus. In, in, uh, in the, and the young people put together a good... Uh, package of, uh, of their uh, uh, writings, of their understanding of how this convention met the needs of a lot of people, and mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of people need to be involved. Mm -hmm. that, that came out of there. We, there were candidates that were endorsed, were indicated that they will work with the Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs mm -hmm. uh, or the convention uh, during this coming, upcoming legislative session. Uh, there were some issues that were brought up that some of the people have already made some over to us to uh, like uh, one of the big issues that has always been plaguing us is how to handle police shootings of black Americans. Mm. That was on your one of the platform issues. Yeah. Oh, it was there. It was there. That's kind of interesting. You, you, no, you, you, it was you in the, the issues before, too. Uh, before, too. Okay. 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 Because, okay. and uh, the whole point was that we felt that uh, the convention felt that it was. Uh, 
that someone outside of the local district attorney ought to be handling those uh -huh. kind of cases. Mm -hmm. And mm. in, 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 in figure that the legislature need to change some of the laws to make this happen. Mm. And uh, there are some issues that are being presented by some of the legislators. Right to, now, today we're speaking. To, to and now with the big event back in the, the shootings and this, that, and the other yeah. around the country and whatever, yeah. that's a big What do you think about that? Well, I, I, I think it's important that we, that, that the elected representatives of our communities control the apparatus that is available for their use. See, uh, policemen do not run the city, but they think they do. Mm -hmm. See, if you remember a few years ago, even him when uh, Arnold, I think his name was shot here in Poland, and some things happened, and, uh, and the police marched against the city government. Mm -hmm. The Oregon Assembly of Black Affairs let the mayor and this, uh, the city council know they were the one who were responsible for the security and, uh, uh, and, and safety, well-being yeah, and safety right, of right, the right, citizen. Right, right, right. Uh, the why police is only, on? our, 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 right. uh, it's only an instrument to right, be used. Right. It's one of the instruments to be used. Why don't they understand that? Well, well it, it goes back to what, what we have come to realize is this governmental or state-sanctioned discrimination against black Americans. Mm -hmm. It started back when the Constitution of Oregon was started. It started back with the United States Constitution mm -hmm. to a large degree. When you, th you figure the person who was black was only a three-fifths of a person, or when here in the state of Oregon, you couldn't even own any what you and I are doing, we could do. Yeah, right. And, and so when you go through and you create a whole uh, reservoir of attitudes and actions, against individuals who are black Americans over the period of time, and even though you change the laws, the process doesn't change. Mm -hmm. And the mm -hmm. people's attitudes don't change mm -hmm. until they're brought forth so that they can be changed. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we necessarily need to do is, is when you see that. See, I, see, and the press has to change the way its attitude. Mm -hmm. When you look at what happened in New York, the press was building up as if the po police was more important than the mayor. Mm -hmm. And they want the mayor to apologize for what? Mm -hmm. For speaking the truth about his son to his son? Or they're recognizing that there must be some carefulness in terms of how we began to handle citizens in it who are black Americans? And, and, and not only that, people, the, the press didn't want to recognize that the police is an instrument of the, of the, of the city. Mm -hmm to provide safety for everybody. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people don't believe that they have to provide safety for black Americans. You know, it's interesting you're making this, these comments at this point in time because I, I had the opportunity to, to hear um, from CNN Mm -hmm. uh, one of our own, uh, Dr. Lee Brown, you know, who was here, who was brought up here, and that mm -hmm. whole whole issue of public safety, whatever, and was very prominent within our area, and then he, he became famous all over the country. He was uh, a former uh, commissioner of police for New York, yeah, he was. and uh, he was one of three panelists, and uh, they didn't have him on personally, but he was on the phone, and he made mention of some of the same points you said, you know, from the standpoint that uh, it was the mayor's responsibility, elected by the people. And, and, and he had a commissioner. And then the idea that you had police, but it's, it, the mayor runs the city of, of New York, if you will. And uh, you're right, uh, the idea is that um, uh, they just, it's paramilitary type deal, and he's the commanding chief. And then the, the citizens are basically put the guidelines together and they negotiate that with the police and whatever. But once it's signed by the city, this is, this, here, here are your orders, if you will, right? Right. Okay, but, but for some strange reason, the, the, we don't understand that. Well, well, I don't think it's... What's see, the deal here? Well, see, I often tell people, it's little old Carol Henry to understand. <laughs> I think others understand it. They do understand that. Huh? Yeah, see, but, but they don't want to acknowledge what is really happening. Mm -hmm. See, and, and, you know, when you begin to see how people have, have looked at blacks' involvement in the country... Now that we're a lot more visible, a lot more active doing things mm -hmm. and whatnot, but we're not do, we're not doing them together. But we are we are visible right, and we're active. Right, right. Uh, uh, people become frightened of this. Mm -hmm. See, and uh, whether we like it or not, 
white men are still afraid of black men. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and see, until we began to know that we were working together and playing together and doing all these mm -hmm. things together, it's not going to change very much. Well, what, what keeps fueling that? You know, I, I know it's another interview where, 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 where Tabitha Smalley was, was interviewing, uh, uh, was it Bill Riley? Uh, Bill Riley, O'Reilly. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and O'Reilly was, he said, that, uh, he said to O'Reilly that, that people like yourself, O'Reilly, was still fueling this issue of the division. You feel somewhat the same way. Well, I think I think that is going on in many instances mm -hmm. still because, uh, you know, as the population expand, and whites leave, lose a lot more power. Mm -hmm. The people want to maintain that power. Mm -hmm. See, at one time you'd be able to uh, say basically define the individual, mm -hmm. but those definitions are not holding true anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, you've heard those saying that if. If I define you and you accept my definition, mm -hmm. I can control you and not even be there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In many instances, this is happening with black Americans. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, in, uh, in many instances, they have been defined over a long period of time, but not involved with each other and not doing things. Mm -hmm. And the, the, def the other people's definition of us have been the thing that we follow more than we follow our own definition. Mm -hmm. See, uh, in, in many instances, people think that blacks don't participate a volunteer in their own community. Blacks do more volunteering than, than many communities, in, in many of them. In so Oregon. In, in Oregon. Mm -hmm. If you go and look, look at the volunteers, they're there. Yeah, I'm volunteering here. Yeah, volunteering. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, it's that we don't highlight that or you give credit to that. Okay. And, uh, uh, and, and we should begin, we should do that. One of the biggest things that the Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs has done over the period of time is honor blacks who are doing something to better the community. Yeah, you've done that, yeah. You know, when we first started, not many blacks were, or group were doing that. Mm -hmm. And they started doing it later when we started doing mm -hmm. it. I always tell people when I went in, one of the first banquet I went with the Urban League, they gave out 22 awards, and only two went to black, mm -hmm. black Americans. Mm -hmm. And that was, you know, back in when I first came over mm here. -hmm. But, but the whole point of it is that if we don't own our own, who's gonna, who else want to mm -hmm. honor us? Mm -hmm. And see, but those are the type of things that we have to understand. Even when we look at what's going on in the schools, yeah. if we don't look at what is how, we, how our children are being taught, how do you expect them to be able to deal with mm -hmm. issues out mm -hmm. there? Mm -hmm. And one of the big things that we did in the convention, we were saying to uh, the presidents of, um, of Oregon State, the uh, University of Oregon, and in Portland State didn't want to deal with us at all mm -hmm. with, it, with that. Uh, uh, and, uh, but we're saying black American students need to understand politics and process. Okay. We only, we only have about eight minutes. I okay. want to make sure I get okay. the rest of this piece. Okay. Well, I want to go back to that fueling, the, fueling the, the issue here because it's still a major issue about the whole issue of police within our state of Oregon. Right. And more specifically here in the Portland metropolitan area. I mentioned Bill O'Reilly, you know, from the standpoint of, and you got Sean, Sean Hannity uh, on that end from a national perspective. And then naturally you got the other mix that just, uh, from our local standpoint in Oregon, we, we've got uh, Lars Larson. Yeah. You know, and, and, know. and, and, and he basically uh, it's been said that he basically does the same fueling of the, of the fly, the division, if you will. Yeah. And, uh, 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 and then, um, uh, so, so. How do, how do we get out of that situation? What well, was see? Now, let me add one more mix. There's another mix that just came to the table, and uh, is Reverend Sharpton. I mean, from a national perspective. But my point is that he's giving his opinion. But he's, uh, but some have said that he's just he's targeting and focusing on black folks. What's well, the difference? Well, well, the point of it is, who is hurting more in this country mm -hmm. than black folks? See, if you're not going to, see, all these folks want to think basically everything is the same since the, the laws have partially changed. Mm -hmm. See, even though the laws have changed, the attitudes and the actions are still the same. Mm -hmm. See, if we don't deal with it and we're not discussing it, we're not, you don't see the growth pattern, you don't see that very much change. That's why people can go out and demonize somebody mm -hmm. and then pretend and hide behind the law, saying mm -hmm. the law, the, that's parody. That's not parody at all. Mm -hmm. See, when, but if anybody, everybody's teaching the children don't look like the children, how can you see there's parody? Mm -hmm. But they want you to believe there's parody. They want you to believe there's no racism, there's no discrimination, there's no this. But at the same time, oh, the laws have changed. 
uh, what people figure you ought to be grateful that the laws change. That you no longer have to say that uh, you can't own a house anymore, but we can keep you down by not giving you, the, uh, not allowing you to have a job that will, that will allow you to ha have the money to buy the house that you necessarily want. Well, let me throw this out to you. Back when we were discussing about the Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs, you would made mention about when you first got involved and in, in putting the organization together, that uh, you'd gotten to corporations and corporations sent down their their, their folks to, to, to participate. Yeah. More specifically, the blacks. You're basically trying to get yeah. understand, well, hey, what's going on? And get involved and come back and tell me what, what one should be doing. And, I, and I'm thinking about the, the, the media aspect of it. When I think about the O'Reilly's and I think about the Sean Hannity's, I think about even the Lars Larson's. And uh, in all due respect, uh, uh, and those, those entities, I, I think about, those are corporations that are paying their ads, that are paying them salaries. So my point is that they're the ones that basically say, okay, fine, what's going to be the platform that you're going to be basically representing that I pay for? Because you know, if I'm paying the money, I got to like what you're doing. Uh, so you know what I'm saying, no, how do you get the corporations to let them recognize the fact that, that this might, that might be an issue here? You give them a different platform. Well, well you, you got to be willing to uh, um, uh, correspond with the corporation and another. But in... Oh, you know, would the similar be uh, able to do that? Or? Well... Were you, were you we, trying we, to do that? Well, that? we are doing some okay. of that, and we've done some of that in the past. But, but, but no, just because they have underwrite some of the, the uh, people who come to the convention... Right. Doesn't mean that they control the outcome of it. See, okay. uh, you, you you're looking at it from the standpoint that the person who paid the piper yeah. can name the tune. Yes, yeah, the golden rule. He who has the gold rule. No, right? but but we have to change that. Okay, all right. Is that we have to write the rule and share it with the people along the way and acknowledge to the public about why well, we're doing that. Right? Yes. It's not about anti or rally or uh, 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 or even uh, uh, large. You know, the the key is it, 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 it's causing division. Yeah, right? and, and yes, and, and you got to begin to hold individuals accountable, accountable. Right. on the record. Right. 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 And uh, see, that's why everything that the Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs has done, we've been out there so it's on the record that you can see it. Mm -hmm. It's not just so uh, Calvin you're doing this and doing that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can see what he, what was was transpiring. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And our point is to make sure that the public is aware that they have a responsibility equally as well mm -hmm. as I or any other. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, but but in many instances, uh, uh, our blacks in the state of Oregon, the black Oregonian, tend not to be willing to share with their bosses all these kinds of things, and therefore they may not get the result of some of these things that transpired. See, I didn't mind sharing with, when I was working the Secretary of State's office, I didn't mind sharing some opinion, of yeah. But, but, you know, I did a... Do it. A lot of folks can't do that, though, Cal. I, I understand yeah, I'm that. I'm saying, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I guess if I had not had the training when I was coming yeah. up through the school... Military. Uh, and the military. No, 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 not, the, not the military. military. Let's when see, I was, see, I, I don't... See, see, no, when I... Look, when I was a young kid growing up in Texas, I was just like a sponge. I read everything I could. I dealt with everything I could. And, and all these things uh, mattered to me a great deal. I had a lot of this stuff in, in my, my resources, uh, 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 in, in my toolbox, if you want to call it. And when, look, I tell could people. Could you have done the same thing in Texas that you've done here in Oregon? I did do some of the same things in no, Texas. No, but, I mean, but you're here. You got the Oregon yeah, yeah, well, the well, You yeah. didn't establish that over there. I, right? I didn't establish it there. Because could uh, you have done that? I, I think I could have. Were you part of the legislature? I mean, at my point, do you think you could have gone back to... I, I tell you, when I was... I'm, I'm, I'm from Texas. I, well, I, I grew up in think, Texas. No, no, no. I, 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 I was I, born I, in Louisiana. Yeah, well, I, what, yeah, you, yeah, know, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. I, yeah. we, we, but, but there are a lot of folks who would oppose what I'm doing. Okay. okay? But, but, but I, you still would have done I, it. I still would have done it. Okay, yeah. example. Okay. I went back to, to look at some of what some of the school work had been done in, in Texarkana, Texas. And I didn't mind challenge the superintendent and others about some of the things yeah. that were going on. But he was willing to tell me, but my, your minister said I was doing a good job. And I had to, you know, I, I wasn't there full time. And, I, and, and when I went down to Wiley College, the college I graduated from, and they were looking for somebody to help create an uh, education uh, uh, department. And one of the things I said to them is that we needed to be able to reach the governor, reach the uh, uh, the, the, the legislators 
and reach the, the Congress people who yeah. were, were setting up policy. Okay. Now, yeah. I think that I would have gotten involved with a lot of well, you, you would have. I, 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 just, just, I just threw that out to yeah, you, yeah, but, but, but I knew you would have yeah, participated. But, but, but it's not as, it's not as dangerously as, 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 as people like to think that it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. It, it's the most important thing is to be able to walk in. And these people re represent us. Yeah. That's see, right. Oh yeah. I, yeah see, I well, don't mind. I make the point that I, make, I understand that. I understand it. You understand it. Yeah, but but many see, of us don't. See, I I don't need nobody to look like me to be able to right. articulate my right. my views. Right. But but how I share with that person how I want to be represented right. is critical. Right. And that's the thing that the Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs try okay. to do more than well, anything. On that particular note, uh, let's get right into another couple of things. I, I will say that uh, Charlie should, uh, I'm talking about our mayor here in Portland, yeah. should have taken on more responsibility of leadership in this whole issue of the police piece. He's kind of just leaving it out there as if to say, well, you know, uh, the well, police is running the whole well, thing. Well, well, the whole point of it is... They're just the, doing their job. You know, you got yeah. they need to be told that they what to do, and then that's the contract. Yeah. The contracts, they hear the guidelines for what you're well, going to well, do. But it's much more than a contract. Well, I mean, I'm just saying See, that's a start, right? At least, at least let people yeah. know that there is a contract, yeah. and, and that was negotiated, and, yeah. and the, he and the city council signed off on that deal, yeah. right? That's right. Okay, good. But, uh, you know, but, but uh, the whole point is... Uh, we'll talk about that a little yeah. bit more. I hate to put that. We'll, we'll talk. we got running out of time. Thank you. I may have to just squeeze you in next week or something because this police thing is something else. Let's talk about the presidential election that's going to be coming up right now. I, I, you know, we've been talk, we talked a little bit about that off-air issue, yes, you will. I was just going to be looking up at what, what, what are we looking forward to here now? Because we're right into the mix of the election. It looked like, a, from the standpoint of uh, the Democratic Party, it looked like the... Uh, the person who's going to be running uh, for president is uh, is uh, uh, the incumbent uh, uh, President Obama is going to be running again. And what's, what's the deal? Well, see, you're going back to the point I made to you earlier, and the point was that people want to build up an attitude uh, based upon the the state-sanctioned discrimination that are led over the years. Hmm. See, they want people to see blacks, uh, Americans as demons, as the problem. See, and I, and I start off saying to people, no president in this country has done more for this country than President Obama has done. Okay. In, 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 in such a short period of time against some of the greatest odds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but what, has, what happened is that people say, well, you don't have population, but people don't, uh, 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 no, popularity, but what people don't want to look at it's how these state-sanctioned discrimination against black Americans have led into looking at his administration, looking at him, and uh, looking at p in the future. And they want to pay, paint anybody who is affiliated with him in the same vein as they want to paint him in. Mm -hmm. But see, but the people who have benefited from a lot of his policies and his actions, a lot of whites have benefited from it. Mm -hmm. But they don't see themselves getting it from him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See? All these decisions that presidents have made in the past have led to their popularity. All the indices that people use to gauge an administration seem not to play in his administration. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, if, if, if later they begin to play, it will help a Democratic individual come up to be the president the next time around. Well, it, it's been it, it's, said that that's what's going to happen because in, in, his, in, his, in the administration for the next two years, it's like the it, he's got executive, uh, he's going to execute issues and, and results do the executive and, orders, right? And, and, and he the should. Republican Party is going to basically go to the court system to cut him down. Right? Well, 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 and that's the, what we're working with right now. No, 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 but see, but people don't want to see the Republican Party or the Republicans in, in Congress are not doing their job. See, they're not passing legislation. See, uh, if, if if people if, are upset with that, well, the, uh, upset with him, them, them not no, doing no, just them. upset with all of them for that matter. No, but they, but, but they want, but they upset. They, they see all of them as being the president, right, and not right, the not right. the Republican. Okay, okay. okay see, the okay. Republican gave up their constitution duty uh, and their oath of office to an outside individual mm. in his first administration, saying they are going to only do say no to everything come up. Hmm, interesting. And you see, when you see that happen, and the people don't address it, and you, when you feel the press doesn't address it, address it, the dress, uh, the press is part of this problem too. Hmm, hmm. They, they, they may come after me. You know, McConnell. I, I was kind of interesting about the McConnell piece because you know he's the president of the Senate, as you know, yeah. McConnell. But it's interesting that he's he's married to a minority. He's married to an Asian. I know he is. Uh -huh. 
But I mean, you would think that there would be. Uh, I mean. No, but see. It, am I out of line? I mean, uh, that no, is a fact, right? Well, if you be more sensitive about well, that? If you look at some of the early people, they were involved with people uh, uh, from minority groups of, in a long time. Huh, really? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's well, you think the sensitivity? You think the sensitivity? Uh, no, would be but, there. but but look. <laughs> Well, uh, I, just, when, uh, when, I just thought I'd throw it in there. No, but but if if you go back and look over the years of this country, how have women been viewed? We got two more minutes. Well, okay. well, we're going to be coming back on that. And that's another issue. Let's get right right. Who's going who, who's going to be the candidates for the Democratic Party to to run for president? Well, well at the moment, they, at the moment, they seem to think that it may, may be Hillary. Hey, Hillary Clinton. Okay, Hillary. On my side of the deal, I'm just, this is just my my prediction aspect of it. I still feel very strongly about um, uh, uh, former General Colin Powell, and uh, first I'm sorry, he could have been our first black president on the other side. You know, you got the you got the knowledge on the other side. You see what I'm saying? So I would think that uh, on my side, I, I, I my predictions are. Let's see. Uh, I would say Jeb Bush and Colin Powell for vice president. What do you think about that? I, you know, I, I, I'm just throwing that out. How I know you're throwing. Well, it's a good way to throw out. Then Ron thing. Paul and Colin. Uh, Colin no, no, but see, 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 the uh, thing. Chris that, Christie and Colin. Uh, well, no, the, the, well, you got to come up with all you want. To, <laughs> but, but but the thing that I said to you. He's a statesman. Well, yes, he is a statesman. He's well recognized. He's well recognized. He's a vet. He's a vet. And all those other things you want to call it. And he's been superb in, in doing a lot of things. But the people Would you are, support him? Well, the people are not where, where... Would you support him? No, you asked me to support a Republican at the moment. Wait a minute, but, no, but, but, but you're, you're uh, in a diverse situation. Now, you, well, can't, you can't take sides. Uh, well, I, don't, uh, I wouldn't take no sides. <laughs> But but the point of what I'm saying to I you, I know they like this, by the way. The, 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 well, well, I know. This but the but the point of it is is okay. that you got you you thinking things of a right. You have to go back and look how women were perceived mm -hmm. in the early years of this country. Mm -hmm. They were perceived as chattel, just like what mm -hmm. blacks were turned mm -hmm. to chattel. Mm -hmm. Interesting. See, we got, we got 20 seconds. Yeah, give 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 them a last statement from Cal Henry. What should they be doing? I think everybody in this state this coming year should be working to make our society a better place. And what about Oregon? In Oregon, I'm, I'm talking about Oregon. Okay. Like in Oregon, we need to be working together to make it a better place. We need to get rid of all these, uh, all these uh, attitudes that stop us from being what we ought to be. And we can be greater than what we are. Cal, <laughs> we want to thank you very much. It's been great. And, and thank you I'm for looking. For, I'm looking for our next encounter. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again, folks. Thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed the show. I'll see you next week. Have a good one. We'll talk about education with Mr. Steve Buell, possibly. Okay. Take care. Have a good one. Again, Mayor, happy New Year's to you. And do something and vote.